my god, the crypto criminals are at it again. Malware in debug, the debug.js package hosted on NPM. Any computer that has this package installed or running should be considered fully compromised. All secrets and keys stored on that computer should be rotated immediately from a different computer. Package should be removed, but as full control of the computer may have been given to an outside entity, there is no guarantee that removing the package will remove all malicious software resulting from installing it. So previously today, Mackenzie Jackson, a developer over at Aikido Security, had written on LinkedIn, urgent, I can't write much, but the largest supply chain compromise in NPM history just happened. Packages with a total of 2 billion weekly downloads just got turned malicious. Packages were compromised an hour ago. Please share urgently. This is a post from five hours ago. And here is the list of all of the packages that were hit. You can see the big numbers here. 371.41 million downloads per week. 357 million downloads a week. Blah, blah, blah. I'll give more details later in another post. And it has a cool little hacked picture for uh, the library on NPM's website. Yeah, a lot of big numbers there. So the GitHub advisory that I showed at the very beginning of the video came from uh, Hacker News here and a link to the NPM debug and chalk packages compromised on akaido.dev and their website. And we can see the uh, package maintainer, I think one of the contributors, the developers here saying, hi, yep, I got pwned. Sorry, everyone, very embarrassing. And if I may, I think this is kind of neat to see really the human and personal response to, hey, someone being compromised that is really such a contributor and open source developer where a lot of these libraries and basically a supply chain compromise happens and then expands out to the entire industry. Very personal, like human, I'm so sorry. This was a human fumble, a mistake that I made, and uh, it's cool to see some other folks chiming in, hey, thanking people, agreeing with everyone who is thanking this individual for owning up so quickly and talking about this was a mistake. I'm gonna be bouncing around for a lot of articles here, sorry, uh, but this was the Aikido post. Starting at September 8th, 1316 UTC, we were notified that all of these packages have bad changes to them. Packages were updated to contain a piece of code that would be executed on the client of a website, which silently intercepts crypto and Web3 activity in the browser. It's the crypto coins! Manipulates walled interactions and rewrites payment destinations so that funds and approvals are redirected to an attacker-controlled account without any obvious signs to the user. Couple screenshots here from the changes on NPM packages, you can see that the index.js or the main file endpoint for a library or package is modified to now include what is line 12 here, this const underscore zero X one one two F A eight equals blah, blah, blah. Now, obviously this is word wrap. You can see the giant horizontal line here. That is the malicious line, obviously minified and obfuscated, so it's nonsensical and not human readable. You have to deobfuscate it, and then you can still kind of dig through what this thing might look like. Here's one example. This was an NPM package diff for a simple swizzle, and you could see the diff here, obviously lines with the minus and red background were removed, uh, plus sign with the new addition in green background is what was added. Quix, or Q-I-X, I think one of the main names for the dependency and maintainer owner for all of this, uh, could see the change in index.js where you have now this big long line. I'll tell you a little bit more about that malicious line of code in just a second. Of course, the Akaido blog does dig into it, but the phishing email is kind of interesting here. The maintainer had shared, and this was a post on Blue Sky, we can see some of the back and forth between Charlie Erickson, the author of the Akaido blog post, kind of doing all the back and forth, and he discusses how the email came from support at npmjs.help. And here is the email rendered and displayed a little bit. You can see a fake NPM logo, hi, their username as part of their ongoing commitment to security, blah, blah, blah. Sketchy link to update 2FA now. <laughs> now the domain npmjs.help was registered just three days ago on September 5th. Kind of wild though, we see a little bit later attackers targeting another npmjs package maintainer. This package, Proto Tinker WC, uh, we could see the entry now contains some malicious code and scrolling down, it is the exact same line. Like the obfuscation of what would be the JavaScript included here is 
copy paste from the original. I don't know if that is to say, okay, that was the same bad actor or uh, malicious individual that was compromising and had taken over after the two-factor authentication fish social engineering lore that had compromised Quix, Q-I-X, but at the very least, it's seen again. Now, I know I've been making light of this a little bit jovially in the video title and the intro to this video, right, because uh, I don't know, this has a lot of different dimensions to it. Yes, of course, obviously, ginormous supply chain compromise and attack due to simply the number of weekly downloads for each of these packages and the sheer number of packages that were compromised. And it is wild that compromising one individual, one developer, has this ripple effect across so many things in our industry, across technology, services, software, things that we use day to day, right? But I also am cognizant that this was a crypto stealer. That's the payload, right? That's the malware, the malicious line of code that would have detonated as these packages were pulled down and used. And that's it. Now, of course, this could have been much worse. It could be egregious, but it went for crypto wallets again. So the first GitHub advisory thing that's like, oh, this machine, anything that used this package must be considered fully compromised, rotate machine, password secrets, all the thing. That was just a little too alarmist for me. So let me show you one last write-up. This came from Security Alliance, uh, SEAL Intel. I'll include a link to all of these in the video description. But oops, no victims. The largest supply chain attack stole five cents. And I really like this write-up. I think this is probably the most uh, comprehensive one with a little bit more of the nerd details and the gory guts that I think we're interested in. They link at the absolute timestamp when this all happened, uh, Charlie Erickson's post to notifying Quicks or bad at computer. Hey, your NPM account seems to have been compromised. One hour ago, it started posting these packages with backdoors to all of your popular packages. And collectively, yes, these packages have over 2 billion downloads a week, making this likely the largest supply chain attack in history. We saw the phishing email already. Uh, npmjs.help is now down. We cannot access that, unfortunately. I wonder if it's on Wayback Machine. npmjs.help. Ooh, September 8th. Do they have it? That'd be bonkers. Ah, so did it have the exact link? Because the homepage is here. Obviously cloned to look like real NPM website. Records show that that domain once resolved to IP address 185.7.81.108. Email contained a link to this. Okay, here's the full link. Can I check Wayback Machine with that? Please, Oh. One of the scripts loaded was the credential stealer, which can be found here. Okay, cool. So we do have the full JavaScript that would have been trying to steal the victim's credentials, username and password, and two-factor authentication to be able to log in to NPM. This was the original, again, obfuscated to hell for what JavaScript is and does. The snippets to take a look at here are how it's retrieving after it hey, gets your username or password. It uses this get URL function, and that includes the parameters that would have all of the information that has just been entered on the web page. And it does that for both the username and password and their one-time pad, one-time password, two-factor authentication thing, as well as the recovery codes, if they were to be asked for. So the get URL function, no matter what they pass in as the parameters here. You can see that being called just above. That funnels it off as URL parameters, like the question mark at the very end of an address, to websocket-api2 publicvm.com images jpeg to png.php. Nice. Is that one still up? I mean it's responding. <laughs> that is their method of exfiltration, right? That's how the attacker is receiving and collecting all the information that the victim provided. Malware analysis though. Once the account was compromised, the attacker published updates to all packages and embedded a crypto stealer. A sample from one such package can be found here. Woo. So here they have this deobfuscated the best that they can. And you can see this check Ethereum W function that's going to end up looking for window.ethereum and running a couple functions here and there. I'm not going to drag us through all of this, obviously, because you can make sense of and the uh, article Security Alliance showcases it just as well. But obviously there are a boatload of cryptocurrency addresses that it's using to hot swap in place and replace any actual transactions or anything that might be sent to an attacker-controlled wallet so they get money rather than the intended recipient. 
The Stealer is not designed for desktop environments, and it does not attempt to read any files or even install any malware. Rather, it checks if window.ethereum exists, and if so, it installs hooks on different functions, like request, send, and send async. It also overwrites the fetch and HTTP request prototype open and prototype send functions. If window.ethereum is hooked successfully, it intercepts both Ethereum and Solana requests. For Ethereum requests, it overwrites a destination address to any of the functions called to the attacker-controlled wallet address. For Solana requests, it overwrites the recipient, destination, and keys on each account to 1911111, effectively breaking the transaction. Any regular normal HTTP communications over fetch or XML HTTP request, it overwrites all JSON responses and then performs a simple string replace on any that looks like a crypto address with 280 hard-coded addresses. That's the big dump of all the Bitcoin addresses or cryptocurrency wallet addresses you saw. Here's the thing. Here's where the important tidbit for this video. Despite the magnitude of the breach and all of those different packages and however many billion, million, zillion, quadrillion downloads they get a week, the attacker appears to have only stolen around 5 cents of Ethereum and 20 US dollars of a meme coin with a whooping 588 US dollars of trading volume over the past 24 hours. And granted, this just happened. And I think, from what I understand, is all cleaned up now. All the packages have okay now been put back in place to not be uh, including a crypto stealer. So the crypto stealer stole... Couple bucks. Largest supply chain attack in history. <laughs> Let me get to the actual, like, important tactical and actionable stuff, though. If you are a package maintainer, uh, you could use a lot of the tooling from uh, this bullet points here, checking your modules file to see if it has that check Ethereum W function. You can check your NPM cache with other scripts that they provided. So big thanks to that. These are just regular bash script syntax, command echo, blah, blah, blah. And even check your entire project. So again, I will include a link to this blog in the video description. So if this is tactical for you, you can go reference those resources. Big long list of indicators of compromise, but I think the takeaway here is that this actually is kind of like a, a fine experiment and test to see, do you know the packages and libraries and dependencies that are in your entire code base? For any software, for any project, whatever, do you have realistically a software bill of materials or SBOM, SBOM, that includes all the ingredients for the recipe that is your code? Can you tell me that you are using the version of simple swizzle color is array whatever? Because unless you're a crypto bro, right? Uh, yes, the packages had a lot of weekly downloads, but the community acted quickly. So the malware packages had zero downloads according to NPPM. I don't know if it's strictly exactly zero because a couple of those did go to the wallet, but it was removed. All these things were cleaned up in less than an hour. The malware just targeted crypto wallets, so it's not the, oh my god, the sky is falling, largest supply chain attack in history. Yes, I, sort of, kind of it is, but the impact, pennies. Other than the man hours and time and whatever resource, money, financial work that hopefully goes into you now being able to analyze and assess and understand, am I affected regardless of it's crypto or not? Because, okay, you should have software build materials, be able to query inventory, know, and have the visibility as to those things. Arda, who we've uh, referenced before in other videos, says, hey, I checked the Ethereum address of the threat actor, TA, and not much drained. If we take a look here at the very top, you can see that same address that was mentioned in the blog and article. And if I go all the way to the very end, it's made 20 bucks. So if anything, lessons learned or whatever, maybe, sure, I don't know. Is that the state of cybersecurity? One developer gets spearfished and then tons of folks end up screaming and shouting compromised with, yeah, crypto stealer, I don't know. But gentle reminder, uh, software bill of materials, S-bombs, are really what we should kind of harp on just so you know whether or not you're actually affected. If it were to be something much bigger or much worse than... Crypto stealers again.